It's Patrick Townley at PTL Arts in my studio and I've been doing a bit of sorting out. So it's the second part of painting a ship, still in acrylics. We'll move on to oils fairly quickly, I think. But I've just like been sorting out my studio, so a quick whistle top stop tour. Hey, look, I put all my There's a few more below, that's like my personal gallery and that's what we're going to be looking at today. So there's the water hanging off of there, I'm ready to go. I'm just going to find the image and yeah, we just have a quick look at it. So we just, I'll just show you the image. There we are. So there we are, it's got pale orange, it's really nice. I know with the oil I'll be able to get much more of the canvas feel than I've got at the minute, but I've got a sort of fair placement, as you can see in the top right hand corner. A fair placement, I'm not trying to copy it exactly, but I just want to get the feel of it. And that's sort of like, I don't know, 40 minutes work there so far. So let's get to it. I've got my three brushes again, big, medium, little, it doesn't really matter, right? the more that you paint, the more you're likely to find brushes that you'd like to use. So I'm going to be looking at the image on my screen while I'm painting, obviously, <laughs> kind of obviously, but I'm still not paying too much attention to it because it can lead you astray. It can lead you astray if you like get too attached. If you get too attached to the image and trying to be perfect, we're not going to be perfect, but what we're going to do is get the spirit of the boat. So we're going to go for darks first. I always start off with darks. So we're going to go for a dark brown, so uh, we'll have a bit of blue, a bit of blue, a bit of yellow, gives us a nice green. Then we just add bits of red until we've got, and maybe a bit more blue, a bit more red. bit more blue. It's quite good this, these sheets, these palette sheets, because uh, they are sort of got a plastic finish with them. And you can use them more than once. I haven't because I didn't want to confuse. Normally I don't use them at all. Um, I do it all in a plastic pot. Uh, and then I can put the lid on it and reuse it. So a bit more red, gently does it, that's quite nice, it's quite a nice purpley now, it's gone purpley, a bit more yellow, there we go. So we start applying some of this. I'm going for the bottom first. There we are. Yes, that's a nice dark tone, isn't it? Remembering that we're putting oils on top of this, I'm just looking now for the shape to just get a bit more of the shape, a bit more of the sense of depth. A sense of depth which we'll get from this. So what I do is just keep applying this, remembering the water, of course. Still quite, with plenty of water, just get it across the bottom of the boat, the darkest bit. I just mix a bit more. You have to be quite quick. So we know what it is. We know it's red and blue with the purple. 
bit more blue so it's darker, a little bit of yellow. More red, eh? There, see? It's gone a bit red now, hasn't it? So you can mix to a degree, you can mix on the canvas. So what I want is this sort of, I know it sounds stupid, but I, I want to get this boat shape. I want it to float, you see. This needs to float, doesn't it? And the actual original one obviously does float because it's a picture of it on the sea. But I want my feel all this. So these sails I know need kind of adjusting because that's like suggesting things are happening which aren't really happening. So at the end of this boat is actually much more about there. These sails I'm going to adjust. You see, getting all of this so you're happy with it and you're beginning to sort of think it's not just bits of paint, but it's actually that you start to feel it. It's, Yeah. Here we've done the blue a bit and brush it in quickly. I've left a bit of a line there because there is going to be a line there. Right, and I'm going to use up these. A bit more water, not really taking. The other thing about putting this um, acrylic on, it takes a while for the paint to actually start to engage with the canvas. So in a sense, we're like priming the canvas as well. Kind of, I'm putting a big thick line on here at the minute. When we get to the oils, the mask will be a bit thinner. Okay, so we've done that right now. I'm gonna wash my brush. And uh, find a cloth, which I should have ready, and I haven't. There you are. Right, just get this cloth so I can just clean the brush a bit. And then I'm going to go for the sails, the orangey. So this is like, a, it's a primary red. It's, it's kind of pink, doesn't it? Uh, well, I guess it is a kind of pink. It's this orange. The sails being orange is what I really like about the image. All red and soft and mix, still mix. I can still pick up the yellow and get it on the canvas. Let's get some water, mix it on the canvas a bit. Let's get the orange tones across these. I'm quite happy where I've got the sails. I just want to get these layers of colours so when I move on to the oils, I've got a suggestion of the tones that I need. It's all quite loose, not formal painting. If you, it's not about being formal, it's about just getting some energy into that and also I need to tighten it up by putting the wedges in that I talked about on another video. So a bit more orange, more orange. You see you can do all of this with just the primary colours. You don't need loads and loads of, you don't need loads and loads. I'm just pulling a bit of dark in there because I want a bit of shadow, a bit of shadow. These sales I just want to sort out a bit if I can. A 
That's it. So it's just dark marks there. I'm not trying to be too accurate about the dark marks. I just need to have them there uh, to show the separation between the sails. This one on the this is goes down much further. This one, so I'm just going to wash the brush a bit, put it on the. Not get too mixed up. When I get to I think I'll have enough definition to tip so I can move on to the oils after this anyway. But if I just keep going with the acrylics because sometimes they just mix on the canvas. The main thing is it's not too that's better. It's going right the way down. This one's going right the way down to there. So I just want to get the idea of it then it's slipping out, slipping off. Where the canvas loosens, it just is coming off. It's not so tight. Right, this one and this one needs to come down. So it's about there. Yeah. So a bit more orange. Do it all nice and quickly while we're on a roll. There we go. Uh, yeah, I want this one to go down a bit more. Uh, across there. I just look over my shoulder at the image, not trying too hard. I just want to get these, some of these angles of these sails. That's better now. It's and then all the oils on top of start to so it's starting also starting to get a bit of character to it. A bit of this orange while I've got it on my brush, just wash it off underneath here, these reflections. It's sort of got a red tide line on that schooner as well. This one's a bit darker, which it is. That's good. It's good. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit of work on the sea, earth, sky, and the sea actually. But I'm going to do the sky first. Right, I'm going to clean my brush. I just rub it about on a on a rag. My water's still fairly clean. It's all quick work there, it's all quick work, so get some ultramarine, uh, it's ultramarine blue, uh, like I say it's just underneath, it's just underneath, an underneath sky, and then I'm going to get some white, just put some energy into the sky, worry about it too much. It's always moving about. Just get some blue, white. A bit of wind. Make it a bit more dramatic than the photograph. You get bits of water running down. Doesn't matter at this stage. Still priming the canvas, there's lots of the canvas that hasn't got really got much paint on it. You need to get, well it's, it's better you need to, but it's better if you've got quite a bit of paint on the canvas because once you get to the oil paints you can make progress much quicker. Um, we've got the shape, I'm going to have a nice paint in here, right, I just want some white. Just don't want to leave this hanging around. Uh, so I've got paint on most of the canvas now. I wouldn't usually use ultramarine, I certainly won't with the oils, I'd be using uh, cerulean blue. 
I expect. <laughs> but I've got a nice layer of paint underneath now. I've got a ship. I'm just going to do a bit of work on the sea. So I'm just going to keep using this blue with a bit of dark green. Put a bit of this is blue and green, isn't it? And then I'll get some white on top with plenty of water. Wash it about. And then just a bit of just see what we can muscle up here. Get some waves, get some energy. So I know what it's going to look like when we start to apply some oil paints. What I really want to get is um, an old fair, and I won't worry about any of these. In fact, I might just put a few just marks to show that we're going to have. To, there's going to be all sorts of stuff on here. There's going to be rigging and everything, which I'm not going to do at this stage. So there's going to be plenty of activity down here. There's going to be plenty of activity holding these sails in place. We've got like a bit of energy in there. We've got some nice colours. We've got some, a definite feeling going on. So yeah, already it's just got a nice vibe to it. It's quite ghostly around here, isn't it? And this is like an hour's work. It's going to be a really, really nice painting. I can tell already. And that's not... So it... It's not about trying to make a really nice painting. It's about looking at what you did, putting paint on there, moving it about, and gradually breaking down any concerns or worries or fears. Or, and that's what starts to make you feel good about what you're doing. So I think this is going to be a really nice painting. Um, I like already the colour harmony is starting to work. I like the fact that it's not going to be this, that actually the work I've been doing on watercolours has paid off because like the more you paint an object it's just like, you know, if you look at somebody's face you, and you, you just get to know it. So it's like making yourself familiar, like my face, I've got this, you know, famous chin. I've got a famous chin. I don't know why it's famous, but um, it's because it's rather, it's, it's got this, uh, you know, longness. So, thank you very much. If you love what I'm doing, thumbs up. I'm good, you know, and also, like, if you want to, like, go through this process, it's on my ptlarts.com free course as a free course i'll be sticking these videos on there as well so you just watch them and apply the stuff that i'm doing and if you don't understand anything that i've been saying put a comment and i'll do my best to answer it so thank you very much see you on the next video because you won't be able to want to miss it will you thank you